should help to focus it. Yeah. Okay, let's then go on and we'll move to, to that point of the, um, uh, the, the data. Um, when, when you're a, a third measure, a third sort of data that I would use is incidentally how I observe children using the strategies. And again, I'd be using the VELs uh, to guide me in, in that way. Uh, and the fifth one are the uh, looking at the literacy outcomes. We do have a whole lot of tests. We, we, we have lots of, of reading tests. The, the question is, to what extent do these tests actually inform the strategies I need to teach students to use to get the reading outcomes? And the tasks are going to do this to various uh, stay uh, to, to, to different points. Um, what, what I've uh, got here, yeah, uh, what, what, what I've got here are the NAPLAN outcomes for uh, 2008 for one school in the uh, Bensdale area. And this is the item by item analysis that you'd all be familiar with. Now, I think the uh, first column of data are the state, uh, are the state outcomes. And the second column is the uh, individual schools outcomes. And in this third column that I've written in here, uh, th these are the alternatives uh, uh, that the children in chose incorrectly, like 46% of their children chose B incorrectly uh, and 25% of their children for number five chose B incorrectly and so on just so we could see where the kids' errors were, were, were occurring. Now, when you look at that data, and this is like the online de on-demand data, you see interesting things. You can see that, say, for item number one, that was really measuring children's ability to locate directly stated information in a text, 98% of the kids answered it correctly, or in the school, 100% of the kids answered correctly. When you look at, say, item number five, that's measuring the same thing. It's measuring how well the kids can make links between items in the text. But this time, 69% answered correctly. There's something not holding up. Do you know what I'm saying? If that's accurate, there's something that's not holding up. Because if the test was doing what it should be doing, it should be doing it reliably. It could be. It could be. So what we then did was to say, when this really isn't telling us much about the teaching. This is not telling me much at all about what's going on. So what we then did was said, OK, to answer the questions, what would you need to do? And we've added an extra column. So what I had the group of teachers do, we're all sitting in a room at the Bensdahl RSL, and we went through the, the items, we read the task, we looked at the, we read the text, and said, what would you have to do to actually answer the question? And that's what we ended up with here. Now, if you look at the first one, that 98% of the kids answered correctly, to do that, you had to link the meanings verbatim in a sentence. It was making a direct link. Number five, you had to summarise two paragraphs identify the main ideas in each and link them. Now that second one is fractionally harder than the first one. Now, what is going to help me more as a teacher? Well, I don't know about you guys, but I know what would help me is not 
this. This is going to help me better. If we look at the year nine uh, task as well, you can see exactly the same sort of things. We've done it with all the way through. If I do an analysis like this, I can see where to focus my teaching. Whereas if I stick with this, I don't know what to do to infer the character's actions for that given, for that given text. I need to get to this other point. Now, I think it's... Yeah. No, no. I would be really... I'd, I'd be... If I were the literacy leader in any school, I'd be trying to do what we did at the RSL, where we, we spent one or two staff meetings going through analysing them like this. I reckon that would be really useful data. And if you're going to use the online testing, I'd be doing similar things. Because it's sometimes it's going to be hard to see where to link the teaching in. This description is better than having no description. This description is better than simply having a, res a number at the end or simply being told the person answered the question incorrectly. For me, and this might just be me, for me, this is even more of a help. And what is even more of a help still is knowing which incorrect item a lot of the children chose. Because that's a, 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 a confusion or a misinterpretation that I need to target in my teaching. And so they're the things that we're wanting to do with our data analysis. Yeah, well, there's an article that I've written about this. I'm more than happy to distribute. That's fine. But you can see where I'm coming from with this, aren't you? And, and I think it would be really great if each of the schools, if each of your schools did this. And we did the same thing with maths. I did the same thing with, at, at, like at Bacchus Marsh Primary where we went through and analysed in the same, similar way, the maths stuff. And you can see where to target the teaching. I'm not, make, be really clear, I'm not saying you should be teaching to the NAPLAN test. That's silly. But what I'm saying is that the NAPLAN has on it reading tasks. And to read those tasks, the kids have to use actions. And we can say, what are the actions they need to do to get the right answer? And if they didn't use those actions, 